Hello. Are you good to go? Or... Hey, it's dear. Hi. Good morning, good afternoon. Good evening. I'm in Boston, so. <laughs> uh -huh. Good night then, man. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So do we get a queue to start or are we ready to start? I was not sure. Let me check. Yeah, yeah. Let me just share my screen. Yeah, you know if you can see my screen. Yes. Cool. All right. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, it's my absolute pleasure to welcome you all to this OF Security Conference. Um, I know that was a great keynote, and I was listening in with some good insights into there. Uh, my name is Sudhir. I'm based in Boston. Uh, I'll be your moderator for tonight. Uh, I'm Director of Product Management at Akamai Technologies, where my responsibilities include creating web and API securities. I'm sure API security is the next frontier we are all fighting against. And there are typically what we see is two types of attacks. One is the volumetric attacks where you do uh, DDoS and bot kind of attacks. And nowadays the next frontier is uh, your behavior-based attacks wherein it's low and slow, uh, you're within your rate limits and, and I'm building products there to make sure that uh, you get the protection against that. I know it's not about me, it's about Alex. So I just want to talk about you know, OASP and OASP in general has been the forefront of promoting these principles and practice of secure software development for a while, almost two decades. And uh, you know, they play a variety, a variety of role in raising the awareness, making sure that organizations are individuals are well protected. One of the things I was fascinated by OASP is like they published recently the API top 10, which is also very interesting. Uh, before we begin some housekeeping rules, uh, the presenters will present around 40 to 45 minutes, same as before. Uh, we do have a Q&A, so please uh, put in your questions in your Q&A app or you know, feel free to uh, chat it in. Uh, we'll have some time at the end, five to 10 minutes to make sure that we answer all your questions. So let's deep dive in. Uh, API security assurance via end-to-end -end testing. Today we have Alex Moore. Alex is a seasoned cyber security professional with over 15 years of experience in the field, a wealth of knowledge in you know, designing, implementing, managing vulnerability assessment. I know this is not about me, it's about Bud Light today. Over to you, Alex, and please fill in if some of the information I missed, and over to you. Thank you, Sadia. Hello, good morning, everyone. Um, and good night, right, I think, for those on, on the East Coast. Uh, so welcome to the shop, uh, workshop on API security assurance via end-to-end -end testing. Um, going to deep dive into, uh, one of the, I think, crucial aspects of software development, right, security testing, right? I think uh, all of us are, or some of us are building software, some of us are breaking into software, and some of us have to secure the software. So today we're going to uh, learn and walk through how we can secure software by actually introducing integrated security testing within our end-to-end uh, -end, uh, development lifecycle. So the idea is to uh, work with developers. So if you're a, a builder, then work with your developers. If you're a breaker, and you're going to create some uh, snippets, you're going to create some uh, test harness that you can use in, uh, against the application in a way that you can reuse that against many applications, right? So uh, the idea is again to make your application more secure or make your test harness go deep dive into the specific business functionality, right? As you mentioned, we have a lot of technologies today uh, around on the, on the right side that is aimed to protect us against bots, it protect us against automatic attacks, but then attackers are going into the business logic. They are identifying new ways into compromising our application. And the idea here is to actually go and protect those specific inputs, specific workflows um, in a way that we can chain a number of attacks to see how the application reacts to and to see that it's indeed checking the inputs, indeed validating the inputs, and indeed it would be withstand these attacks all overall making a more secure product. So, brief introduction of myself. Um, my name is Alex Moore. I spent most of my career in information consulting, um, mostly working at Ernst & Young and um, Ernst & Young's clients in Israel, so based out of Israel. I recently joined, recently is four years ago, uh, Anaisa Bush um, as Application Security Director. If you haven't heard of Anaisa Bush before, no worries, it's okay. Um, probably uh, know us by our beer bands, uh, beer brands, sorry, uh, some of the most popular ones, right? Uh, Bud Light, 
Budweiser, Corona, Stella, um, Paul Garden. And so hopefully you uh, are having great time with your friends drinking our beer. Um, many times I'm asked, like, what do you do at a beer company? They're like, what do, why do you, does a beer company need cybersecurity? And I think um, to answer that question, it's the same as asking, why does a paper company need cybersecurity? Or why does a metal manufacturing need cybersecurity? Because we are all right now fighting attackers that want to compromise our applications. We are all in the digital transformation phase and um, all of us are kind of bringing the rather software uh, standards, software platforms, into manufacturing, into uh, the, the idea of protecting new software that is eventually going to sell beer, sell metal, sell paper. So um, we're all in here to come up and build a better world, build a better software for ourselves. Um, I also want to kind of shine that um, today we, we are living the dream, right? Cybersecurity is living the dream. Is that's because we have like endless opportunities. We have um, um, more or less the work that we have. It's endless, right? It's it's you you can work on your application. You um, at least personally, right? I I hack my application uh, overnight, and then in the morning I go and work with my developers on how to better secure that, and and that's like uh, providing me with 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 joy and um, thousands of hours of of. Uh, spending in burp suite or uh, working on our products. So the agenda for today, right? I wanna start with a short motivation uh, and, and why I kind of created this talk. Then uh, for those who are not into software testing or uh, more coming from the breaker side, right? I will briefly cover what is software testing, what is end-to-end -end testing, what is unit test, how does it look like? I'll introduce um, an application called Insecure Cuts, right? One of the things, uh, that's still um, trying to do, keep, keeping myself sharp is build applications. And nowadays it's becoming very hard to build a vulnerable application. So I always kind of wonder myself, like how did they manage to break their application like that, right? So I was gonna use a, an insecure cuts application to demonstrate some of the features of creating end-to-end -end security testing. And then we'll finalize with a few uh, Q and A, um, a few uh, um, next steps. And again, feel free to submit the questions um, through the Hoover app so that we can later have a fruitful discussion on whether this actually works and whether you see that being implemented in your workflow, in your day-to-day -day operation. So motivation, right? So I think most, not most, but a lot of the communications I've had with the uh, engineering team, with product teams uh, over the course of my career, uh, and again, working, consulting is many times, uh, here's a report, I come in, I, I work with them, I sit with them, I send them over the email, the report of security vulnerabilities. Please go ahead and fix those. Um, we need those fixed within 60 days or 30 days. Uh, we have a real uh, blocker with uh, uh, having those security issues still open. And we really need, you know, um, you fix those a thousand findings, right? So, so the, that type of communication that, that I feel is today uh, we are not engaging enough with engineers. We are not engaging enough with the product teams. And the idea is to try to come up with a different way of communications, with a different way to approach the engineering team. Um, and, and that is to kind of work together, right? Give them something that they, they can take on, give them knowledge, give them some uh, code snippets that they can implement in their products to build a more secure product rather than just come up with, here's a list of findings, the report is a, uh, uh, a thousand SAS findings. I haven't, I haven't had a chance to validate them, but I don't know the code, but you should be able to do that. Or here's a, uh, you know, 5,000 um, dependency security container uh, image scans that we have. You need to go and upgrade your container. But so the idea is to kind of shift that transaction, that, that discussion into giving the developer a tool, giving developers um, uh, templates to actually implement security within their product. And you know what, what I want kind of to happen is that you know, as application security, we're focused more on securing the application, working with the developer, um, uh, coming up with um, you know protections within the code, within the code base, and less here's a report of findings, here's 10,000 10, 10, 10, findings created by six different tools. 
please go and fix it uh, until uh, the next 30 days because this is our risk appetite and we need that uh, to be resolved. So that is the idea. Um, the challenge today, right, is, is uh, when, when you approach to that developer, they are, uh, they are the masters. Today, developers actually have the keys to the kingdom. They build the application, they build the infrastructure, um, they, they build all the walls around the application, they build all the API traffic uh, that's gonna be implemented, they build the business logic. And with the recent transition of DevOps, right? they, they also build the, the testing, they also build um, uh, everything that's gonna um, makes the application sell and they are responsible for actually being the people to secure that, right? So the idea on, on what I want is like, let's teach developers, let's teach engineers how to log their kingdom. Let's provide them with tools. Let's create some test harnesses that we can give them and really uh, empower them to participate uh, in the next sprint planning and ask a few questions, right? What am I building? What can go wrong, right? Are we doing a good job against that? So being able to give those tools to the developers is in fact teaching them how to lock it, right? Those um, including acceptance criteria within within the sprint or within the user story is giving the developer the tools, the threat models that I kind of, you know, as a security practitioner, whisper in their ear and, and really ask them like, is this API secure? Do you have authentication? Did we implement the input validation? So these are the things like the basics, right? That we want to teach developers and how to secure that. So quick introduction uh, into software testing. I think, again, with the DevOps, uh, 15 years, right, of, of uh, uh, history, software testing has become really a key into making sure that your application is resilient, performing, um, um, stable, and the whole, you know, CI in software testing, or sorry, CI in, in, in CI CD is continuous integration. So the continuous integration is that your application keeps running. Any change that you introduce in the code is not affecting uh, uh, the stability of the application. It will continue operating as designed. And so what I want to kind of cover uh, within, I guess, few few minutes is how those tests look like. Are there other tests than, than integration tests? And then, and then come up with uh, where I think security can actually come in and help testers, come in and help developers, engineers uh, improve, or as us is coming into uh, building those harnesses, building those uh, test cases that we can uh, adapt from one application to the other, having like a set of, uh, let's say, unit tests, right? Or uh, uh, capabilities that we want to, confirm the application implements correctly, right? So software testing, right? So how, how does that look like? Um, you can think of, you know, unit testing, um, having several uh, um, layers, right? We, we, we will see that it becomes eventually a pyramid, but the first uh, kind of basic test that we have is called unit tests, right? It it's focuses on you know, those small units of operation, small uh, uh, pieces of code that they actually work uh, as intended in isolation, right? I'm not looking into how the other APIs communicate. I'm not looking into how the database is there or, it is, or it's not there, whether uh, uh, the, the other third-party integrations are working or not. I'm just looking into my pieces of code, making sure that they are operating, right? Uh, many times we will hear the, the word mock, meaning that we mock all the other players just to make sure that my uh, small unit works. Uh, and then we will see today that there are also some uh, security tests that can be integrated into unit tests uh, coming from the from the top down all the way. The next layer is called integration test. It's, it's actually looking into how several components uh, work together. So for example, I have a database, I have my, my application, I'm making sure that the information that I create actually persists in the database, and then I'm actually get able to pull that off the database uh, whenever I need. So this is more uh, a few systems working together. This is the continuous integration, right? A piece that we were talking about that uh, kind of helps shape the, the the queue works together, the database works together, the services works together, the uh, 
the third-party APIs work together and everything comes up into the desired results. And the idea here is that those tests repeat themselves every build, build themselves uh, on, on every code, on every pull request, meaning that they continuously happen. And this is where exactly where I want to put in security. Security is going to be continuously tested um, as new code changes come up uh, with the application. The next layer is end-to-end -end tests. Um, this is the idea of having actually a browser, right, to mimic user input, mimic user traffic, and then go through all the layers of the application. So with end-to-end -end tests, I can send an API request to the backend, and then I can go to the front end and see how that uh, actually comes into rendered. Uh, and, and is there any you know, vulnerability in there? Is the information presented correctly, right? One, one kind of example that I like to give on end-to-end -end testing is I'll reach out if the backend right is, is an API. So if I can send or create a profile, and in my profile, I'll put uh, within my first name, last name, uh, address, photo, right? I'll put some um, cross-site scripting payloads, and then I'll open the front end, and I'll see if anything of that was executed. And the idea is to do that automatically with a test harness with a number of testing frameworks that will get to know together, but that's the end-to-end -end test. It's like the system test, everything, uh, front-end, browser, mobile application, everything uh, comes into play. Maybe sometimes we also see the last piece here is the, like the manual testing, and that is the piece that I actually want to reduce, right? So, so that uh, today we will focus on creating automated tests for our application so that our manual work is really uh, um, into the specific business logic, into the specific thing that cannot be scripted into a test. Okay. <clears throat> so why do we even do testing, right? I think uh, kind of, why do we integrate security testing into development lifecycle? I think you know, you're all convinced, but you know, just making sure that um, we kind of recap everything we've talked about is that it's immediate uh, feedback, right? If, um, if security breaks, if an API is left open, if an API, uh, some someone dropped the authorization uh, annotation from the API, security breaks, right? And it breaks in the pipeline. You don't need to kind of uh, do wait for the next pen test to come. The developer gets immediate feedback. And also us, right? If I want to retest an application, I found a, a bug in the application, I want to retest it. I'll just push the button. All the security checks run. Uh, it's like an advanced dust, but I configure, I configure the the test cases that I want to focus on, right? I do a penetration test. I, I will eventually end up with a test of cases that I can give the developers, hand them over and say, okay, when you got those, all those bugs, right? All those case, test cases pass, then let's work together. Let's, 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 let's reconvene and think on the next steps, right? In, in the testing, we have you know, either the test fails or the test passes. Passes is good. Um, fails means something is is broken. So immediate uh, uh, feedback. It saves time, right? Because I can reuse my test. I can reuse my logic. I can reuse um, the the idea of doing file upload. I'll just change the endpoint, or I can reuse the, the check on role. I just need to do that on different endpoint. But I write the test once and then just copy paste it. Um, I am promoting the developer to think like a security engineer, or actually to think like an attacker, right? Don't trust anybody. So developer is the one that creates abuse cases um, or, or me whispering in their ear, you should test for uh, uh, validation of input. You should test for a uh, file upload. You should make sure that your file is restricting right uh, execution or restricting uh, the types of data, or you should test that your API permits uh, deleting the data only if it was created by the same person. Right? So the idea is that we promote, we push, we, we, we empower developers to make decisions on how to create those APIs. Um, for sure, we gain a performance improvement, right? Because my application would now be more secure. I am going to, you know, my, my test cases are input validation. So I would like to see if someone can register with a with a bad password. I can check and implement um, a, a rate limit scenario checking, can I register 100 users and not validate their emails, right? So I want to help the application become more stable and thus gaining performance improvement. Helps us with security by design and for sure improves uh, and 
start small, right? I think one of the ideas is to kind of start with the basics, start with the uh, you know OWASP top ten, then go OWASP top ten API, uh, or start with um, um, validating that inputs are solid, inputs are you know having a specific length, having specific type, and then let's add another another layer of business logic and workflow. And the the beauty of end to end test is that I can script together several let's say interactions with the APIs, with the database, and actually see that all pieces are indeed secure and that there's no kind of uh, a place where it's not working, right? It may be uh, like an e-commerce system. I can place an order and then uh, I can get the invoice, but then I wanna make sure that when I place an order, I only able to get my invoice and uh, I will not be able to actually affect anything else. Or for example, if I um, have a way to, submit an order and add several prices so several items to a cart right and i will have those scripted in a way that i will try to modify the quantity to a negative amount i'll try to modify uh, the sum uh, or the price of the item and then submit that to the order api and make sure that indeed nothing was affected and the application is working correctly so this is kind of helping me um, build on top of my layers of the API. Okay. So insecure cuts, right? I think I introduced that in the in the first place. So it's really hard to make a vulnerable applications, right? Um, it's it always kind of struggles me uh, or puzzles me to see that even um, mature and and senior developers and experienced developers sometimes um, cut corners. Sometimes you know, kind of go back. Like if you, let's let's. Uh, maybe make an anal analogy of saying you get to drive an autonomous car, but then you shift to manual and you kind of go go uh, remove all the security, right? Um, when you have this framework giving you all the capabilities of building a secure application, but then you go and actually uh, write raw SQL query because you're you're a king of SQLs, um, and 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 that's where sometimes vulnerabilities happen. So um, the insecure cuts application is is as you mentioned and imagine it's a it's a barbershop uh, operations management i didn't implement all the features but kind of giving you the, an idea of what the application would do and then helping us come up with those abuse cases right so uh, appointment schedule like you you would go um you would find a barbershop uh, in your area you have uh, uh, a, a preferable stylist that you want to work with and then you can do an appointment uh, scheduling, uh, you can, um, there, are, there are two personas here, right? Maybe even three, the person, the user, the, the consumer, the barbershop manager, and the stylists, right? Um, and the stylists can make some dynamic pricing because some um, um, haircuts uh, cost more, cost more money. If they happen in, in, in the morning, maybe you would say, okay, one extra uh, uh, $5 for that. Um, you can manage customer profiles and say, okay, this is a VIP customer. Uh, I'm going to do a, a free uh, shampoo for them, right? Um, we'll see how we can integrate payment and then look into how security can test those integrations, meaning that when I submit uh, the service was completed, that the appointment was completed, I will request for payment and make sure that I actually receive the same payment in the same currency um, in the same uh, uh, amount, uh, and and if if I added some add-ons, those those add-ons would be all calculated, and attackers, users, malicious users would not be able to manipulate my application into fraud, right? Um, so that's the uh, introduction to the application. I I kind of created some mockups uh, of some other um, applications so that you can see how that would look like. So you can start, you know, operating your 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 attacker mindset. To see, okay, oh, if I'm gonna create a service in a barbershop, this could entitle or this could allow me as a malicious stylist steal steal customers from an, another stylist, right? Or uh, if I'm a if I'm a barbershop and someone hacks the barbershop, maybe I can see who are the uh, co consumers visiting that place, and maybe I can uh, promote them into uh, coming into my place, right? So uh, again, every application is important. Every application. Uh, has value uh, to their owners. Every application has value to attackers as well, right? Uh, if I can manipulate the, um, the the way the payment works, 
if I can take a few dollars off their payment, if I can eventually compromise their application and uh, do a ransomware attack or uh, create a, a crypto mining a rig in their cloud. So it's a win-win situation for the attackers, not, not really win for the, uh, uh, for the shop owners. So it is to kind of have services, have a way to schedule um, an appointment. And then as you come in to schedule an appointment, you need to be uh, registered users. So um, that's the overall basic features, right? The kind of MVP, minimum viable product that we're building uh, for the application. If you want to break it down a little bit into features and user stories. So we'll have the user registration, authentication. We'll have the um, login, logout features. Uh, user can manage their profile. They can edit their profile. They can view their booked appointments and then you know cancel uh, appointments. Um, there's also the barbershop and the barbershop profile that they can register a barbershop, register specialties, register services, and uh, create pricing for each of those. So if I want to convert that product those features into end-to-end -end testing perspectives, that would look a little different, right? So the user integration, registration, sign up, I would uh, uh, write that in what is called a spec style. This is called spec style. It's a, it's a, it's a Ruby way of writing tests. I think these were one of the um, uh, pioneers for software testing. So I would describe that there's an auth test and a, uh, a sign up and signing. And then within those, I will be writing my tests. If I'm going to look at appointment booking, for example, then I'm going to have uh, overall testing the controller, the API uh, operations for appointments, and then individually each operation, book an appointment, cancel an appointment, uh, modify an appointment, so that uh, those, when when building the end test or the um, or even the integration test, this is how engineers, software engineers today test their code. I think um, if you're not familiar right with um, uh, test-driven development, um, acceptance criteria driven development, all those um, uh, driven, driven development is kind of what's powering today's um, software industry to say, uh, I'm going to first write my test, the test is going to fail, and then I'm going to implement my logic, and then I'm going to make sure that you know the test passes so that I know next time I'm going to build a new feature, the previous logic all still works and is not affected. Um, user profile would look like that, so my users, uh, me get my account, view my appointments, and I think you know maybe kind of start thinking um, what security acceptance criteria is going to be implemented here. What are the security tests that I'm going to run in order to make sure that the user profile management piece of the application works correctly? And likewise, the barbershop profiles, um, business right, the barbershop register a business, um, edit the business, and again you can probably think, okay, can a user edit someone else's business can a user can a barber a submit a change to barber b's um, um barber shop right uh, can i see appointments of a, of a barber shop that i'm not an owner um what if i'm an employee can i see other employees appointments can i see other employees pricing maybe some of those actually make sense right you should be able to see the uh the pricing of other employees in your barber shop right because eventually you want to uh, get customers, um, but also from an attack uh, from an attacker's perspective, some of those features actually require specific validation by uh, by the engineering team. And again, availability check, right? You don't want to double book. You don't want to um, schedule an appointment where the when the barber shop is closed. So these are the uh, overall uh, positive tests that that we have in making the application functionality. An example of how that's going to work, right, is I'm a, I'm a developer, so I'm going to create, right, I'm going to implement a should sign up uh, test. I'm going to send it a data transfer object. This is the way that the application actually receives the data from the user. It's called a data transfer object with the specific fields, the email, the username, and whatever is required uh, per the data model, per the business requirement that we want everyone to be registered. Yes, they need to register with first name and last name. Okay, well, maybe there's a test that's going to be, can I register without those, right? Will the application behave correctly? And then this is the beauty here that I'm actually running that against a live application, right? I'm going to call the auth signup API and I'm going to expect to have a created reply. I'm going to expect to have a job created and that um, it's indeed... Uh, creating my uh, my user, my identity, 
with the specified first name, last name field. So, um, and again, your attacker mindset is now kind of processing what's going to happen here. I'm going to put in uh, cross-site scripting payloads in the first name, I'm going to put in um, SQL injection payloads in the last name. I'm going to do, uh, right in the sign in, I'm going to try to do SQL injection and bypass the login authentication. Uh, maybe this password reset. So I'm going to also try to bypass those as well. Yes, you're right. We have to kind of test those, but I would say let's keep them for um, the static analysis. Let's give keep them for the you know automated tests uh, because they are easy to, to perform. And again, if you're if you're a um, a defender, then you want to work with your uh, engineers actually to make sure that those tests run within the environment within the CI uh, as part of their testing uh, activity. If you're an attacker, yes, you can integrate here some third-party APIs, you can run Zap, you can run uh, uh, another commercial DAST uh, on those endpoints specifically um, because you know, you know what's the uh, payload, you know what data to send, you know how uh, what the application actually expects, then you can do that. But what I want is to kind of go and uh, to the next level, I want us to build a test case saying, I'm going to create a should sign up exactly the same way here, but then I'm going to test another case should uh, sign up with XSS payloads in the in all the fields, right? Uh, other than validations and the email, for for example, and then I will open script that open a browser, go into my profile, and make sure that the browser actually does not render. Like if React does not use uh, inner HTML or dangerously set in HTML, uh, the same way for for Angular or uh, any other view uh, platform. So that's the kind of way of thinking I wanna make sure that you implement in those tests here. And always for sure the should sign up, the regular testing, right? Should not sign up a user if an email already exists. Should not sign up a user if uh, um, they're using capital letters or lowercase letters. Should not allow someone to uh, register another account on the same uh, you know, uh, unique um, username so so that we can avoid you know the whole account takeover uh, ideas so this is exactly what we kind of talked about right you will try all the lockout scripts all the all the things that you're used to do manually i want you to script them i want you to give them to the engineering team later so that they can have those test harnesses and they will try to log in uh, with with the, with an account five times and then see that the next time we're going to uh, uh, try to do, to do the login, it's going to detect that there was a rate limit and it, it's going to request them to wait a few minutes, one, two minutes, or it's going to, you know, uh, ask them to, uh, uh, to answer a captcha that's going to come from the front end if the back end is not externally facing, right? Um, so that's the idea of having end-to-end -end tests, meaning that the payload is scripted and the validation is also scripted not to have any pop-up. So, Moving forward, we always have need we need to have a um a image of, of a kitten. So so here's my kitten. He is here to um help me with writing the basic tests of even input validation. Right? Should not sign in with an incorrect password. This would how that would look like in our application. Um, I'm using Nest.js framework for that application. So one of the test uh, frameworks for Nest.js is called SuperTest. Fairly easy. Uh, fairly uh, um, lightweight and but but yet very comprehensive in the way that I think can uh, script things. So I think if you're you know not um, um, writing code today, this is a good opportunity to get started. This is JavaScript code. We have test uh, harnesses or testing frameworks in Python. We have testing frameworks in Java. So every language has kind of you know a specific uh, test framework that works best that works you know kind of integrated with that. But again, you can use any of those. Uh, for your own testing, for your own scripts that you that you would build, and that is the idea here to um, uh, come up with a set of tests, set of checks that I would actually write post re, uh, with the data tr transfer object, the email, and the password. This is uh, I have previously registered a user in my previous test, and now I'm gonna run the test to make sure that actually I cannot sign in with the wrong password. Right? And I expect an error of, sorry, of 403. Correct? So that is how I 
continuously make sure that my application does not allow people to sign in with an incorrect pass. And then I can put on my various payloads here, right? I can run some uh, uh, checks on the email. I can um, um, make sure that you know, if it's a very long password, um, it, it, it kind of um, doesn't break. The application keeps on working, keeps on running so that um, continuously I can test for security. Um, let's say my application is kind of new application and I want to work with the engineering team and say, guys, um, we have a, um, a, a user base, a customer base that's, that's growing right now and we need to um, do password complexity, right? Maybe something that business has decided not to do in the, in the first place. Uh, and now we want to implement password complexity. So how would that look like? Switching to uh, to other uh, um, um, engineers here working on that. So should not sign up with a weak password, right? If this is the test case that I'm going to implement within my end-to-end -end, uh, application or even maybe even a layer deep in the integration test, um, meaning that if I'm going to specify password one, two, three, four, five, six, I expect that my application would not allow me to sign up. And this should actually be an error saying password is not strong enough. So this is something that I can then give to the developer, or this is something that I can use with every application if I'm a penetration tester, something that I can use with every application that I'm testing. And actually, um, just on a click of a button, um, just before that, like update the, the various API endpoints, run a, run a button, and get the actually business logic that I used to do manually, get those implemented correctly, right? I don't know if there's a dust today that can uh, register with a weak password, but for sure you can script that and, and, and have your test cases created for you. We'll see also with, with, with the AI that can help me there, but you can have those uh, test cases created and you can build on top of them with every, uh, with every application. And the same for the uh, engineering team, we can, uh, have better tests, have better um, uh, security testing with every iteration, with every release of the code. So how does that look like? If I'm going to create, if my application today allows users to register with a weak password, and I'm going to write and include that test uh, within my testing cases, I'm going to run it and it's going to fail, right? Because I was still able to sign up. I can sign up with the correct password. I would not be able to sign in with an incorrect password, but also, because I should move it to the sign up page, but uh, should not sign up with a weak password. So now my tests have failed. And now actually my engineers, if, if they have good continuous integrations, they would not be able to proceed. They would not be able to move on with the uh, 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 delivery piece, right? They would, their containers would not build uh, and, and would not reach you know, the, the, the container registry because they need to fix the code, because they need to make sure that continuous integration still runs, and uh, therefore they would need to go and fix uh, um, this bug. So how does that look like? For example, with Nest.js, um, I can create a validation uh, on the class validator that the data coming from the user, for example, uh, if it's a password field, I can make sure that there's a minimum length to that and that it's actually gonna be a strong password. So how does that look like? Let's go pick up, try to do a live demo here. See what you see there. Okay, good. So let's find my test case. This is the test, should not sign in user one, right, with an incorrect password. Sorry about that one. Where is the weak one? Here it is. So should not allow a new account, a new user to register with a weak password. Let's see what has failed. So I actually have another test that's gonna, that's go, we're gonna fix uh, later, but uh, I have two test cases that have failed here. Let's go for the first one. So the test case failed because instead of getting 400 errors, I got 201 created, right? The user, I was actually able to create the account with the weak password. So now what I would work with the developer, I would kind of uh, um, 
help them is, okay, when as part of your acceptance criteria, you need to add another class validator to the data transfer object. So they would need to go to the sign up page, right? This is an SGS application. So the class validator for password, something that I can say um, is strong password. And then require that minimum length, let's say six, let's say seven, right? Let's, let's make it complex. Okay. So now the test case, whenever I, I, I'm uh, updating my code, my test cases run again. See? I have error here. Sorry, it's not mean length, it's mean length, right? else running the test again okay let's go Yeah. So six, six typically works. Go back in. Live demos are, are the worst. This is how it would look like. So, okay, maybe I was missing a space or something. So run the test again. And now actually the test case for should not sign up with weak password has passed. Why? Because I have required the user to send a strong password. And therefore, if they will try to send a weak password, the test case actually replies that password is not strong enough. And that's how I improved my application with a very small initiative, very small piece working with the engineering team and giving them a way to kind of implement security as part of their end-to-end uh, -end testing. So this was one example uh, that, that we have. Let's go into next example. Let's look into um, the appointment management. So um, what I want to help here is I want to actually, you know, um, try to give the user a way to come up with those security tests on their own. Let's say I'm not there. Let's say I'm sick. Uh, I cannot be in any a sprint planning meeting. I want to be able to get the users to kind of um, come up with the security test cases on their own. And for doing that, I'm going to use AI, right? Uh, Maybe, maybe today's uh, LLMs are kind of uh, advancing and, and I can actually go and ask um, the, the, the AI or the chatbot, hey, can you come up with some security testing for my uh, application? And here's a um, building, for example, let's see how that works, right? Um, I'm going to use BARD for that. So screen, I'm going to use Bard and I'm going to ask Bard, hey, um, so act as a security engineer or a software engineer, right? Um, go ahead. We use that one, right? So act as a soft security engineer and um, you're assigned to work on an application which has a feature to create appointments, right? I'm not going to share any information with them. And even I can use the um, the various implementations of the private uh, instances uh, for OpenAI, for example. But I'm going to say, okay, here's very generic uh, feature to create application. Below is a, some skeleton tests, right? The appointment that we've seen, create appointment, delete appointments. So come up with security tests for this feature. And for reference, use OWASP top 10. I want you to output that to similar to RSpec, like the uh, the spec language. 
And then let's see what the AI has come out. So um, should book an appointment, meaning that for sure it should require authentication. Yes, you're right. I mean, it's another test case that, that maybe my engineers did not think of. They would automatically go and book an appointment and then the application would kind of, when, when there's no authentication, it would have um, unspecified beha behavior. So yeah, should require authentication is another test that I can implement within my application. Should validate the appointment data. Yes, for sure. Um, authorize the user to create an appointment. Maybe not all users can create an appointment. Prevent creation of duplicate appointments. Yes, in 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 terms of the barbershop, um, but maybe there's a better way here. Let's go into the the next suggestion. I think that one looks better, right? So um, reject request with invalid authentication. So meaning that it has to be authenticated. Um, prevent users from booking appointments outside of their available time slots of the barbershop available time slots. Correct. So um, prevent users from booking appointments for other users. This is gold, really. This is the uh, um, engineer. If they will implement that, they will have a super secure application because they would now have uh, um, prevented what is called for me, uh, that would look like a, like a bola where you can actually uh, assign or create appointments for other people um, and then um, prevent Booking for, for the past, yes, this is business logic, right? So something that's gonna be improving the stability of the application. Cancel appointments, reject appointments that the user does not own. This is gold. This is cybersecurity, application security. This is me giving the developer my heart and my thoughts and my mind into how I would attack their application. And if they have uh, implemented that test correctly, then their application, uh, you know, I'm 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 not gonna find anything in the penetration test because they have already covered all the privilege escalation, uh, all the you know um, uh, function level authorization, property level authorization, um, um, broken objects uh, uh, authorization. So uh, everything that that uh, this is fraud, right? If uh, I paid or if I schedule something and I need to go and and, and pay for that and. It has already passed. I should not be able to cancel that, right? Let's let's look at uh, you know um, e-commerce application. Um, the, the the order was already already delivered. I cannot cancel that. Uh, for example, maybe I can refund it. Maybe there's a different process that I'm going to invoke. But I cannot cancel that and say, okay, give me my money back, right? So this is gold for that um, AI assisted end-to-end uh, -end testing creation, right? The same, modify appointment. And this is, this is again, um, me in the beginning working with the developers, creating just the skeleton. You write the test, I will help you as part of accepting criteria to include that, right? So for example, should reject requests to modify appointments that the user does not own, right? It, it It's trivial, but not all developers today actually go and implement that. So um, this is what, uh, I want us to kind of come up with a um, skeleton, templates, things that we can give the developers to create, uh, write and implement, right? So this is the, these are the test cases that we have. Um, before we kind of summarize one more example, right? Um, this very, very basic, very like level, uh, level one uh, security headers that I want to implement. I want to make sure that you know, all my applications have those, uh, you know, low hanging fruits covered. So I would actually go ahead and um, script that test to say, as part of security headers, it should have HSTS, right? Um, uh, header in place, a string transfer security header. And then I would actually want to see the specific value for include subdomains and the max age. So if I'm gonna run my, my server right now, right? It's cool. Server. There yet. I'm gonna run my server today. Should have HSTS header. It's fa it fails. My application cannot build, cannot continue on, on, on that. So I need to go and fix that. Right? The way to go and fix that is to actually again include that as, as part of the sprint zero uh, uh, action items exception criteria for sprint zero and go ahead and within my main module actually guide the, the users to use Helmet. To, uh, actually, Helmet is the um, NPM package to introduce the functionality or the features 
of automatically including security headers into my application. I can specify which headers I want to include, but if I'm just going to run that with um, uh, with with no function, it's going to include a lot of security headers, right? Um, and it's going to implement my content security policy. It's going to implement um, um, strict transport uh, uh, security and and, and uh, XSS, sorry, uh, X protection and no sniff, like all the the, the OS uh, best practices on security headers. Gonna get those out of the box. So just gonna use the same you know way of testing my application within the environment that I'm running that in the test environment. So just uncomment the line here. So my test environment would actually use the same as my production environment. So now that it uses Helmet, guys, all my tests have passed. I've just improved the security of my application, of my business, and I actually have, have just been able to um, reuse my test cases for other microservices, for other APIs, for other applications that I'm testing, and thus uh, uh, being able to improve and, and being able to work with developers and, and really um, um, transitioning from that, you know, here's a report, uh, here's the vulnerabilities, go fix them, but here's a security test Let's implement it together to make the application more secure. Um, uh, it's worth saying, right, that testing is 50% of the development time. Meaning that if we are, if our organization, if our engineering managers have mandated testing, it means that the engineers are already uh, investing 50% of the development time to actually write tests. So investing on top of that, a few more percents to write the security test that I will give them. Uh, as, as kind of um, on a plate, uh, and they would just need to adapt to their specific use case is gold, right? So all my tests are now passing. Um, uh, Alex, uh, can we wrap it up? And yeah, a few questions. Yeah, we to. yeah and then, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is um, kind of what, what's your next steps, right? Focus on the quick wins, create a few templates for abuse cases and unit tests, and give your developers those um, um, one line is that they need to go and implement that and, and then be able to paste that, copy paste that from today they work in microservice A, tomorrow microservice B, but that's the idea, right? Quick wins, work with your developers, give them tools, teach them on how to ask uh, uh, the right questions on the uh, um, on their APIs that they're building, on the controller, the, the business functionality that they're building. Yeah. So right on, on the questions piece. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Thanks. This is a great presentation. I would have preferred a beer example than the haircut, but I think that helps solve the problem and set the stage. Uh, so some of the questions, uh, I have like one or two questions, but uh, maybe I'll ask this question. I haven't experienced it. Uh, one of the challenges you have is writing the test is code is also changing. You know, you're adding new features every iteration, every sprint, right? So how do you keep up your security testing with the ever involving velocity of feature re releases. So I think I think great question, right? This is the challenge that um, uh, we have, right? Many features created in a short period of time, not enough security engineers uh, to work on them. So uh, the challenge is to to kind of go with security education and um, being able to come up with teaching the developer asking the question, what can go wrong. What am I doing wrong? And again, using the power of AI, right? Now here's a feature that I'm going to build, create security tests or come up with some ideas for security testing for me. And if that's not possible, even uh, even then, then um, the engineering team can say, okay, let's flag this feature as a uh, significant feature. I'm adding a new API. I am integrating with third-party component, integrating with third-party um, uh, um, service. What should I come up and, and think over there, right? So we want to create that uh, interaction between uh, engineering and security. So- Yeah, so I'm making it as a practice, as security as part of your development, and that's great. So I know we have a lot of participants. Feel free to add questions to your q and I know it's time for this presentation. We'll try to get back or answer to your text. If you put it in the app, we'll try to answer that. Thank you so much, Alex. It was great. Thank you, Sadeem. You know, all the new coding exercises. I learned a lot. I'm sure, you know, all the attendees enjoyed as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Had a great time. Thank you.